Good day everyone, good day sir. This time, let us try to look at some examples on group isomorphisms. For the first example, let G be the real numbers under addition and let bar G be the positive real numbers under multiplication. Then, G and bar G are isomorphic under the mapping V of X is equal to 2 raised to X. To prove that G is isomorphic to bar G, we have to follow the four steps mentioned earlier by Ma'am Sumampong. For the first step, it is the mapping. We have to define our function. So, let phi of x be equal to 2 raised to x. Clearly, phi is a function from g to bar g. Next, for the second step, is to show that it is 1 to 1. And that is, we have to assume that phi of x is equal to phi of y and show that x is equal to y. Our phi of x is equal to 2 raised to x and so we can have 2 raised to x equals 2 raised to y. To solve this, let's make use of logarithms. We can have log base 2 of 2 raised to x is equal to log base 2 of 2 raised to y. Thus, x is equal to y. Next, third step is to show that it is on 2. This means that for each y in g, there must exist x in g such that phi of x is equal to y. So, we have 2 raised to x is equal to y. Solving for x, we can have log base 2 of y. We have to double check if y is in r. If we try to substitute any number to x in 2 raised to x is equal to y, may it be negative, 0, or positive, it will always be equal to a positive real number. Therefore, it is on 2. Next for the last step is operation preserving. Remember we are looking at phi of x plus y is equal to phi of x, phi of y for all x and y element in G. So we have phi of x plus y is equal to 2 raised to x plus y and that is equal to 2 raised to x times 2 raised to y which is also equal to phi of x, phi of y. Thus, it is operation preserving as well. Therefore, we have proved that G is isomorphic to bar G. For the next example, any infinite cyclic group is isomorphic to Z. If A is a generator of the cyclic group, the mapping A raised to K to K is an isomorphism. To prove this, let us first recall theorem 4.1. Let G be a group and let A belong to G. If A has infinite order, then A raised to I is equal to A raised to J if and only if I is equal to J. If A has finite order, say N, then the generator of A is equal to the elements E, A through A raised to N minus 1. And A raised to I is equal to A raised to J if and only if N divides I minus J. To prove this, let G generated by A be any infinite cyclic group. So for the first step, we have the mapping. We have to show that G goes to Z. We have our function f of a raised to k is equal to k, where k is an element in z. Our function f is well defined. Since g generated by a is an infinite cyclic group, the order of g is infinite. Therefore, a raised to i is an element of g generated by a. Second step is to show that it is 1 to 1. So a raised to i is equal to a raised to j if and only if i is equal to j. Take note that a raised to i equals a raised to j implies a raised to i minus j equals e. We must have i minus j equals 0. This is also equal to i equals j. Therefore, it is 1 to 1. Third step is to show that it is on two. Suppose 
a raised to k is an arbitrary member of the generator of a. By the division algorithm, there exist integers q and r such that k is equal to qn plus r with r greater than or equal to 0 but less than n. Then, a raised to k is equal to a raised to qn plus r which is equal to a raised to qn a raised to r which is equal to quantity of a raised to n raised to q a raised to r which is also equal to e a raised to r which is finally equal to a raised to r so that a raised to k is an element of e a through a raised to n minus 1. Therefore, it is on 2. For the last step is to show that it is operation preserving. Now, we assume that a raised to i is equal to a raised to j and prove that n divides i minus j. We begin by observing that a raised to i equals a raised to j implies a raised to i minus j equals e. And so, by the division algorithm, there are integers q and r such that i minus j is equal to qn plus r with r greater than or equal to 0 but less than n. Then, a raised to i minus j is equal to a raised to qn plus r. And therefore, we can have e is equal to a raised to i minus j equals a raised to qn plus r equals quantity of a raised to n raised to q a raised to r which is equal to e raised to q a raised to r which is also equal to e a raised to r and finally that is equal to a raised to r since n is the least positive integer such that a raised to n is the identity, we must have r is equal to 0 so that n divides i minus j. Conversely, if i minus j is equal to nq, then a raised to i minus j is equal to a raised to nq, which is equal to e raised to q, which is equal to e, so that a raised to i is equal to a raised to j. Thus, it is operation preserving. Therefore, a raised to k to k is an isomorphism through theorem 4.1.